Good afternoon. Good morning from New Zealand, Sir Cork. Rainy day in the UK, Bert. Good to see you. Uh, we'll give people a few more minutes to get in and uh, get sorted if they're going to be here to witness our monthly report. So, Michael. Yes. We talk about how everything's kind of a theory, a hypothesis, until <laughs> everything's a theory or hypothesis until like we actually put it through the ringer, right? So like we've had times where you and I will disagree on something, but I'm like, well, we haven't tried it yet. Let's we try it. We never disagree. We never disagree. You're you're the you're the yin to my Leroy Jenkins Yang. Like I, I want to YOLO into everything and you're over there going, well, actually, as I push up my glasses, as you push up your glasses. Yeah. Uh, Fip, thank you for the, uh, golf centric, uh, meme there. That's funny. That actually is identical. That, that looks just like me. Actually, if you ask anybody, that's exactly what I look like when I'm on the golf course. <laughs> so anyway, so we had a crossroads moment about seven weeks ago when it came to the fund and the protocol. It, it was obvious that we were in need of a change in direction. You know, the, the narrative and the theory behind the protocol is the same. We are still a long-term fund that is a medium of exchange with a deflationary token, uh, you know, all of those things remain true. We still have this long-term bias towards the market cycle going into 2025. All those things remain true. However, we had a moment in September where we needed to devise a new plan to attack the market aggressively now instead of simply just waiting for value later. And so we made this change mid-September. We had good initial results leading into the September monthly report. As everybody remembers, we went from an average of about nine to $10,000 in yield the first two months to September with only 10 days of this new strategy in place, actually more like seven days with this new strategy in place. We bumped that up to 13,500. Great. So, but October is kind of our make or break kind of, uh, you know, shit or get off the pot moment for the fund, right? So we walked into this month knowing that we needed to prove our hypothesis true, you know, and if we didn't, we would need to, you know, figure out the next best step forward uh, for the fund. So we took, you know, about 300,000, 330,000 uh, of the DeFi fund and we put it into these, uh, continuously managed uh, concentrated liquidity pools that we picked out the pools, we picked out the pairings and we run, you know, analysis on these pools and these pairings every day. You know, like we're always talking about, in fact, there's three pools that we're probably going to rebalance right after this call. Um, and so we've gone through and we've done this process through the month of October and uh, you know, we, we've had great results. I know, Originally, at the beginning of the month, I said I would love to clear twenty thousand dollars in yield. Now, the previous months were ten thousand dollars, so a two x would have been, you know, great, great change of pace for us, a uh, great return on, on a fund of that size, and um, and so we wanted to kind of challenge ourselves and uh, and put uh, put the fund to work to see how much we could generate yield wise. So, Michael, without further ado, how about you let everybody know what did we actually generate in yield last month? So uh, let me pull up the exact number. Uh, for the month of October, we generated $26,500 in yield. Holy shit! Really? Yeah. $26,500. Our goal was $20,000. We generated $26,500 off of approximately $330,000 in the principal fund. That's, yeah. what, almost 10%? 
Uh, yeah. So we generated. Let's about seven safely and a half percent. Say, okay, so we for generated seven and a half for for a single month. So twenty six thousand five hundred. That is our first month's uh, experiment with this new strategy. Those are realized gains, Texas. And those are us claiming the rewards. For perspective, if you compounded 100% of that and annualized it, you're looking at something like 238% APY. We could have. However, we made sure that we brought as much of that revenue back to the market as possible, which means in that same time that we were generating $26,500 in yield, the price of stasis rose 72%. Now, did we bring most of that revenue back to the market? We did. Did we have new investors invest in the project? We did. So those things paired together resulted in us moving the price of stasis 72% within the month of October. Now we're back to pre-sale price, launch price in that general vicinity. But at the end of the day, not only did we generate that amount of revenue, not only did we have the price of stasis increase 72%, Michael, what else happened with the DeFi fund? I feel like this is a trick question I'm not set up for. (laughs) The value of the DeFi fund also rose $30,000. So, The clear message is is we were able to deliver all of this value in one month without touching the principle of the DeFi fund. So if people have any questions about what uh, what the overall outcome of this past month was, the DeFi fund grew in value. The yield was 25% higher than we projected it to be and we didn't touch any of the principal when it came to re- bringing that revenue back to the market and so you know people people were given the price the price movement of stasis people were questioning whether or not we were draining our fund in order to pump the price and that wasn't happening at all in fact it was the opposite we used income only to buy back and burn strategically when it was best suited for the protocol, which we said we would always do. And through that, the revenue was higher. The DeFi funds ending balance for the month of October was higher. And we have now burned what? 68% of the total supply that we, uh, that we started with. Yeah. Something somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah, 68.03%. Awesome. Cool. All right. So now that we got the biggest point out of the way, we like to just start with the good news. Uh, Unfortunately for certain people, there is no bad news in this report. Uh, There is just more good news, more details for what you guys want to see. But as of right now, Michael, correct me if I'm wrong, the first two days of November, we yielded like $3,200. Yeah. Uh, actually, puts us, even a little more than that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so not only was not only was the month of October great for us, we believe that we have found a strategy, given the current market conditions and the market that we're running into, we, will, we can continue to provide this level of revenue from the fund and grow it accordingly. Uh, and so I think, uh, I think those are the key takeaways here. Yeah, so here's the thing, Painball. The people are going to sell. People have their reasons for selling. People have their reasons for taking profit, whatever it might be. At the end of the day, and I've said this several times, and it's worth repeating, no individual holder will ever have enough tokens to outsell the revenue we can generate with the protocol to buy back. It might take time if there's multiple large holders that want to sell it might take time to counteract their sales but they will always run out of tokens we as long as we have a fund that is generating revenue we will never run out of revenue so it's simply a game of 
attrition. It's simply a game of patience. And so, but we set that up from the beginning, right? From the moment we launched Stasis, we had that conversation with everybody that we talked to. This is a long-term commitment. This is a long-term process. Uh, now we we've, we've changed strategies a little bit to bring you a bit more value now, which the results speak for themselves. But the underlying premise of the whole protocol hasn't changed. So Green Nixon asked earlier, how did we come up with the name Stasis? We came up with the name Stasis because we were tired of the surprises that happen in DeFi. You know, we come, we, we, a lot of us come from MDB, which is the, the previous project that a lot of us come from. And it was slow, it was steady, it was dependable. And so just like homeostasis in the human body, we, we wanted to create something that people could walk away from and then come back to and see that nothing changed in a bad way. You know, we want them, we want things to change from their passive income is still printing, the fund is still growing, the supply is still decreasing. Those are good changes. What we wanted to avoid was bad surprises. So the name stasis comes from the idea of it's, it's dependable. Stasis means harmony. It means balance. Um, so that's how we came up with that name. So that's something that is, uh, was key to us from a, from a sense of like, you could set your dynamic strategies, you can walk away for six months, you can come back and things are going to be as you expected. They're not going to be the same. Obviously, we don't want things to be the same. We want things to be better over time, but they will be as you expected, which is your money's still working for you. You're still earning rewards and those rewards are still being processed the way you set them with your dynamic strategies. All right, Michael, let's get into this monthly report. Let's give them all the boring uh, spreadsheet information. Uh, but at the end of the day, Thesis is healthy. The DeFi fund is healthy. Um, and our hypothesis about our new strategy within the fund is proving to be extremely successful. All right. You guys had Hype Man prepare for Math Man. <laughs> granular guy all right let's dive into the actual report um so just quick summary um patrick captured a lot of it already uh key takeaways again uh 26,500 in yield in terms of change from the prior strategy you're looking at essentially two and a half times the yield generation that we had um, before we shifted strategies. So we're, we're really happy with the performance that the pools have been um, generating with this new strategy. On the low end with these pools, our most conservative position is generating about 44% APY, while our top performers are spiking around... 250 to I think 400% was one of the highs that I saw, but our high performance pools are about, uh, they're returning on average around a hundred percent plus. Um, so, you know, as more and more volume is coming into DeFi, as you're seeing more and more of these tokens get exchanged, it's only going to be better for these concentrated pools. Um, really happy with the direction that we're seeing things going between the yield that we generated and underlying asset appreciation. Um, we are looking at, a almost $32,000, um, appreciation of the DeFi fund itself. Uh, again, very, very happy with that. Um, October was a fantastic month. Uh, November is already shaping up to be a great month. Like Patrick said, in our first two days, over $3,200 in yield in just two days. Um, so volume's coming back and it's great. Uh, volume means we make more money. The more volume, the better the fund's going to do. So um, really enjoying seeing life come back into the uh, the DeFi sector. Um, it's really helping this this new strategy and this new approach shine. Um, and I, I really feel like we're well positioned to, to capitalize on that. Um, other key takeaways, again, Patrick already mentioned most of this, um, 72% increase in STS token price over the month. Uh, we burned 68% of the total supply that's gone forever. 
Um, obviously, buys and burns and just burns from the functioning of the protocol are going to continue to take place. Um, so, you know, it's just chipping away at that supply. Um, deflationary tokenomics, hard at work. So uh, very excited to see where we end up at uh, by the end of the year. Um, yeah, the, the, uh, the big thing there is, is we won't be slowing down our burns. Like uh, I might start doing smaller ones to just do them more frequently. Uh, but we have every intention of keeping the revenue moving into the market to get a hold of these tokens and destroy them. You know, so uh, my goal by the end of the year is to get us um, under 60 million circulating, uh, which would be 10% of the circulating supply currently. Um, so that's that's a goal of mine. It might be a stretch goal, but it's something that I, I want to do. I want to get us below 60 million circulating supply by the end of the year. Um, and then just to clarify, the fund value grew $31,800 from the beginning of the month to the end of the month. Um, that's not plus 26,000 from the yield because we used, I would say roughly about 20,000 of the yield to bring back to the market um, on top of other investors uh, choosing to buy in as well. And so um, that growth of the DeFi fund is outside of the yield. Uh, so you're looking at about a 10, 12%, 10, 11% growth in value of the underlying assets of the DeFi fund uh, because of a good chunk, a good majority of the yield that we generated, we did bring back to the market uh, to acquire tokens and burn them. So that's the 26,000 is related to, but not directly tied to the 31,000. So that's just a clarification. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> for those of you who are a little more hawk-eyed and watching the actual positions that the fund is taking uh we decided to get out of both the som position that we had on camelot as well as our pika holdings um just weren't performing and you know along the metrics that we had assigned for them so uh those were reallocate reallocated to our other positions in the fund um, the only new position we entered was a uh, ETH RLB uh, concentrated pool. And uh, honestly, it's it's been one of our best performers. Um, I think GambleFi as a sector is going to see some significant growth uh, coming into this next bull market. And we were... We saw a window to get into RLB, um, so we had a great entry into it before this most recent run up, and uh, it's just it's been a solid performer. Very very happy with that position. Yeah. Uh, moving into the specific breakdowns, um, nothing really stands out too much of note. Um, if you're curious about the actual breakdown of each individual asset that we're in. Um, you can see them here. Uh, obviously, you know, as we kind of keep our eye on the underlying assets in these pools, uh, we'll be rebalancing the, uh, I guess, the percentage of the fund um, that's allocated for. I think this will reflect it a little bit better. Um, so, you know, there are some positions we're more heavily into. Um, but like I said, I, every day we're looking and evaluating these pools and not just the pools themselves, but the underlying assets. Um, you know, for example, right now, uh, we have a significant allocation to the ARB pool. And part of that is, you know, we know that the token unlocks are coming early next year. And typically with those sorts of large unlocks, um, they're going to do everything they can to drive up the price before that happens. And that's exactly what we've been seeing, um, especially in the last week or so, as you know, that news has been circulating more and more in regards to the ARB unlock coming up uh, next year for you know, all the initial VCs, investors, larger players. Uh, you've been seeing that 
outpaced appreciation. And obviously, you know, as we get closer to that, that's probably something that we'll de-risk out of and we'll move out of that position. But that's just one example. We, we are keeping an eye on all of these underlying assets in addition to the pool. And it's something that we actively rebalance um, as, as it's going on. Yep. Yeah. The uh, one, one note that I wanted to bring up is the trading allocation. That was all my fault. The trading allocation sat idle this past month. It was communication error on my side, but it does kind of lend itself to the strength of our new strategy is our trading allocation yielded 0% for October and we still hit 26.5. Generally that trading allocation will go, you know, $1,800, $1,700 a month. Uh, So we were essentially, that was my bad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it also uh, helps drive home the strength of the strategy that we're implementing now. So a little bit of both. But as you can see with the DeFi fund allocations, nothing's over 12%. So originally, the first two uh, monthly reports, we had a couple. We had one that was like at 20, 20%, 20%, 20%, 22%. Uh, we've, we've kind of spread them out a bit more. Um, into a bit more exposure into other assets. A lot of it is ETH exposure because we are we are secretly ETH maxis, um, but then we do have our exposure to all these other what we call blue chip or blue chip adjacent assets that we think are going to have uh, huge growth potential over the next two years. So until the trend is broken, we have to continue to believe that the market moves in four year cycles, and so. Second half of 2025 is when we hit like full euphoria, all time highs again. And we believe with this strategy, not only will we experience significant amounts of revenue due to volume increase throughout the market at at a macro scale, uh, the growth potential of these assets on average, ETH against these other assets, can be anywhere from 7 to 15x from where we currently are. Now, if you were to extrapolate that from a fiat standpoint, you could understand why we personally as a team are so bullish, not only on the strategy, but the long range vision we have for the fund and the protocol as well. Yeah, it's going to be a very exciting next couple of months uh, for sure. Uh, Moving right along. Uh, This is just a snapshot of the various operational assets and balances that we have. Um, nothing too exciting on this page. Um, we do have the overall snapshot of the DeFi fund, um, just showing the beginning value, ending value, uh, monthly yield and P and L again, though, um, as Patrick reiterated, a significant amount of that yield was returned to the market and isn't reflected in the total monthly P and L. Um, so that is a, a good point to keep in mind. Um, yeah. But in general, yeah, if, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. If if we would have fully compounded what we brought back to the market, the P&L for the fund would have been like 50,000 or 52,000, you know. But but again, that was part of our strategy changes. We could have compounded all of that, but we want we want to bring value back to the market for you guys. And so... We, we will see a little less increase on the short term, but you'll see more value coming back to the market because the medium of exchange, the stasis token, is your guys' access to value. And we need to make sure that that medium of exchange is healthy. And that's why our ratios are good for our LPs. That's why we've seen the value of the token increase over the last month. That's going to continue to be our focus. Um, but we are going to have moments of consolidation. Like right now, right around pre-sale price, uh, we have a moment of consolidation where people are willing to sell now, uh, whether they need to move on or realize capital or, or, or they, need, they, they want to invest in something else, whatever it might be. It's their prerogative. We make no judgment on it. But if people are willing to sell at a certain price level, then we are able to either increase our commitments to the market or increase our commitments to the DeFi fund. And we can, we can make those changes in real time on a sliding scale that allows us to make sure that we're being as efficient with capital as possible, whether it's bringing value back to the market or if it's just compounding back into the fund. 
Um, so, but that's something again, just like our positions, we monitor in real time and we make the best judgment call in that moment about what to do with the revenue that we're generating. Exactly. Um, so <laughs> moving along here, um, this is a snapshot of the treasury in its entirety. Uh, you can see a breakdown of what we have uh, in terms of the fund, as well as the various um, treasury operational balances, farms, um, everything of that nature. Um, this is, one again, one of those slides that... I, I don't want to frame it in terms of PL because it's not genuine or reflective of what's going on with the treasury, but uh, you can see there was a, in notional value in terms of US dollars, a $40,000 uh, increase in terms of uh, the overall treasury itself. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you just say 40,000? Because it looks like 62,000 to me. Am I? Oh, wow. Yeah. 60, See, this is what happens when you do things in the early afternoon. <laughs> it's like 63,000. It's a $63,000 yeah. value increase. 40, 63. Same thing. Just saying. You know, we, we grew the treasury, the overall treasury. We grew the overall treasury by like 12%. This is, not, this is siesta time for me, Patrick. <laughs> not, not math. Yeah, we did. We did have to delay. We did have to delay an hour, didn't we? Uh, let's see. So again, over here, uh, you know, one of the big things that Patrick and I really believe in is capital efficiency. And that's why I love the treasury composition page. There is no fat left to trim. Um, everything is either in the fund or serving as liquidity for the protocol. Um, that's all I have to say about that slide. I just, I love yeah. this slide. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. Well, it, it's important to remember like how efficient we are with capital. Like obviously, you know, the, we had a long talk with the team. We made significant reductions in costs. You know, me personally, I haven't taken a salary or a token since we launched. You know, I haven't recovered any of my build costs. Those are all down the road things that I'm committed to because we know what's coming market-wise. Uh, but at the end of the day, like we wanted to make sure that every penny and every token that existed within the protocol was being used with maximum efficiency. So 80% or so is in the DeFi fund. So that's kind of roughly been our number this whole time. And then the rest of it, the other not 1% that's operational balance, everything else is providing liquidity. Uh, because we we are trying to avoid any any legitimate claims of honey potting or whatever it might be. We, we want to make sure that our liquidity percentages, our ratios are as healthy as possible. Um, so yeah, the composition is something that um, we we constantly keep an eye on because we want to make sure that the narrative within the protocol is as strong as possible. Um, this slide here is essentially a same snapshot as before um just without the DeFi fund balance so purely the treasury operational balances uh and farm balances um so you know uh, if you want to dive into the specific holdings of the treasury um all the information is uh here on this slide in terms of protocol metrics um you can see we saw uh, an increase in the fully di fully diluted value market cap, um, despite uh, burning as much as we did. Um, same thing with the circulating uh, market cap. Um, treasury value went up. Uh, you can see that the backing liquidity. Uh, the value of the backing liquidity also went up. That just taps right back into what Patrick just said in terms of making sure that we have healthy ratios, sufficient liquidity. Um, those are some you know points that we're very focused on uh, and are very important to us. Um, the staking APY, uh, it was nice to see single staking go up. Um, 
the farms are still holding relatively, you know, and, and points that we thought they would. Um, in terms of burns, again, you know, we're looking at 68% of the total supply gone forever. Moving forward into um, future end of month reports, um, I'll be putting uh, out metrics in terms of uh, circulating supply burns and ratios. Uh, just got a little messy, or a little messy with uh, how much of the non-circulating supply we burned this month. Uh, but moving forward, I'll make sure that uh, that data is included. Uh, cool. Patrick, do you have any notes on uh, on this page, this data? Uh, the only thing I would point out is the circulating supply went up only because we included the multi-sig address into circulating total supply in our calculations. So that wasn't there before. Uh, so uh, there's a half a million tokens approximately sitting in the multi-sig that uh, we kind of just keep a buffer in case someone wants to do a small OTC or uh, or if we need tokens for giveaways or maybe we kick up hoard boxes again sometime down the road. You don't know. We might do something crazy like that. Uh, so that's the only kind of note is, is the circulating supply went up a little bit um, despite the fact that we've been dirt burning significant sums of tokens. Uh, simply because we included the multi-sig into the circulating supply now. So the only uh, tokens that are not part of the circulating supply calculation is the NFT contract because those are literally locked. You know, So there's nothing we can do about that. So those aren't part of it. But um, Viking, if you were listening from the start, you would know the very important update that we mentioned. So if you didn't hear that part, uh, I would definitely recommend uh you know listening to the playback once we publish it uh, no brent you did not hear anything about whores with a hard d we, with a hard d. <laughs> in retrospect we probably should have called it something else <laughs> <laughs> uh all right uh any other questions uh before we start to wrap this up uh the plan moving forward is we're going to keep optimizing and uh growing this uh strategy so i'm constantly looking for new opportunities michael is constantly shooting those new opportunities down and eventually we will find <laughs> things that work i'm always like michael check out this pairing he's like that's a shit coin that's a meme coin that's going to be dead in like a week that just because it's apr is high doesn't mean we should invest in it so yeah so i'm over here leroy jenkinsing into everything and michael is pulling me back keeping me keeping me sane are taxes on buy sells close to covering operating costs um i haven't even thought about that honestly texas um we pull operating costs from the yield uh our operating costs are less than six thousand dollars a month those are primarily just some small hosting fees uh and salaries small salaries for the rest of the team um so the tax revenue and the rest of the yield uh goes essentially back to the market or gets compounded so i would say hmm, if i had to throw a number out there i would guess about current current volumes and current systems we have in place for rewards i would say 3,000 to 3,500 uh, is in revenue is generated from the actual tax contracts. You add that to the 26,5 that we earn, that's 30,000. You take away five, 6,000 for expenses, you're looking at about 24,000 net profits from last month. So, uh, and like I said, we used a good chunk of that to. Uh, bring value back to the market. So that's kind of just ballpark, I'm guessing, would be the, the breakdown of, of buy and tell, sell tax revenue. We, 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 I guess I don't view the buy and sell tax as a direct supplier of revenue for our operating expenses. I kind of just see it all going into a single pot with our like yield revenue. And and so that's kind of how, like, just philosophically, I view it when it comes to the protocol. Um, and so, 
uh, the key, the key is, is that we, we have a system where you, the buy and sell taxes, the, the fees for farming and staking, they're entry fees, right? They're like, they're the ticket you paid to get to the game, I guess. And so, um, those, those enhance our revenues, but still at the end of the day, we want to make sure the fund was the vast majority of our revenue. Anything else? Dude, all right. So, the the Viking collection, uh, we had um, tax rebate. No, I don't think there'll be any tax rebate. <laughs> uh, we had our Halloween event uh, for the end of the month, and we had it was very successful. We picked out Ian picked out five of the most Halloween esque uh, uh, NFTs. Then we pulled a trick near the end of the day and swapped out the two remaining ones with Viking Van- or Valkyrie's Vanguard. And those both sold. So we sold out our Halloween event. Uh, the NFTs continue to be incredibly popular. Uh, they are, depending on where the price lands with the token, they will be fully backed fiat value-wise once Stasis hits 1.2 cents, I think. So... If we do have another event where you get to buy an NFT, not only do you get some extremely beautiful artwork that Ian created, uh, there will be value involved as well because they are almost fully backed now from a fiat value standpoint. I think the last time I redeemed an NFT, uh, 55,000 stasis came out. So if you were to have minted an NFT at the original mint for $600, and the price were to go up to point one point two, you would be theoretically at break even. So uh, remember, we started the Stasis Viking collection with about forty five percent token backing. Now we're at ninety five percent token backing. Uh, if you've minted that mint price, so significant amount of value went back to the NFT holders as well. Um, so we are we are making sure that we're taking care of all the users within the protocol. So we might have uh, we might have a Thanksgiving event or a Black Friday event. Uh, we'll definitely have a uh, a Christmas and New Year's event for sure. Um, one last thing, we are in discussion with potentially. This is for anyone who's interested in Vixana. I call her Vixana, even though it's not pronounced that way. A little alpha for everybody. Everybody who's interested in Vixana, there is a chance that the gods get together and choose to elevate her to god status. Goddess status. So there's a chance that we have an 11th goddess who... The price would be higher, obviously, but would also qualify for monthly bonuses, which I have to send out the gods' monthly bonuses uh, in the next couple of days. But there's a chance that Vixana becomes a goddess of the Stasis Viking collection. Uh, the wedding went well. Thank you. Uh, it was uh, another family member. Family member, my brother-in-law, uh, got married. They had it at a very nice wildflower center. The wedding and reception. DJ was great. He played a lot of early 2000 classics that brought back a lot of memories. Um, but besides that, uh, nobody got sick. Nobody got in a fight. Nobody pissed off the mother-in-law. So I think it was a successful wedding across the board. Everybody's very excited about Vixana. I was pretty excited about it, too. I think, uh, I think it's worth seriously considering. If we do do the hoard boxes, hoard hard with, a, with a hard D, uh, we might do them January, or we will do a NFT version of the hoard boxes where if you buy a box, there's an NFT and a token bonus inside. So uh, we, we'll see. We'll see. We might. I'm. I'm. I'm in the ideation phase when it comes to all that. Michael, is there anything else that we need to cover, go over, or reiterate? 
I think the the takeaway is just you know we turned on the money printer and it's it's working great. We did, mm-hmm. we did, and like I said, my projection that I wanted to hit was twenty thousand. We got twenty six thousand five hundred. And twenty thousand was a stretch goal. And twenty thousand was a stretch goal, but we don't want to tell people that. No. We want to. We we were fully confident in twenty thousand. Absolutely. And the key for us is it wasn't a one off. This is something that it takes time. Like, don't get me wrong. We we Michael and I are making this sound easy. I talked to Patrick it, way too much. <laughs> Both of our significant others are concerned about our relationship. That's how much we talk. But that's how much this strategy demands in order to keep it viable. And so we want to make sure that you know we are taking care of the fact that we need to monitor these investments on a daily basis. This is my full-time job. When Michael's not working, this is basically his full-time job. And that's the reason we can get away with deriving so much value from the fund at its current size. And so uh, that's really important to keep in mind. Now, at the end of the day, it is something that we can continue to do. That revenue is going to continue to exist as long as the markets continue to exist. And there is no indication that Uniswap and all these blue chips are going to die tomorrow. And because of that, we can continue to drive revenue. We can continue to bring that revenue back to the market. And we can continue to take care of the medium of exchange between you and the fund, which is the stasis token. And so as long as we do that, we will continue to uh, make sure that we're all heading in the right direction. Uh, We're on a sustainable path. That is the key takeaway. And that is exactly what we're trying to say. Uh, 26,000 is our new benchmark. We might hit it in this next month. We might not, but at least we have an idea of what we can do. And so the next step is, is we continue to grow the fund. We continue to grow the revenue. We continue to grow the value of the protocol. Uh, and through that, we're going to burn a shit ton of tokens. And we're going to make sure that every time rewards trigger, your ownership percentage in the token supply goes up because that's the biggest deal. Um, other than that, uh, I think we just need to give away some stasis and uh, get out of here for the weekend. Absolutely. Cool. All right. I'm doing two $25 stasis giveaways. I'm going to pick at random. But it's biased because I get to choose. And you know what? You have to live with the consequences. All right, first $25 giveaway I am going to give to Rain Phase. I, that is a gentleman that I enjoy greatly. Uh, actually, if you have time, Rain Phase, can you put a link to the podcast episode you did with 100X in the chat? Uh, Rain Phase did a uh, podcast episode with 100X, Matthew, uh, and, and Jesse's company, the 100X podcast. Uh, if you put that in the chat, we can check it out. So, Rain Phase, I'm going to get you $25 in STS tokens. And the other $25 in STS is going to go to. Hmm. Hmm. Who should I give it to? I can't give it to you, Michael. You already had too many tokens. <laughs> No more for me. I'm full. Thank you. No more for you. Um, I'm actually going to give it to uh, Balatia D. I'm assuming I messed that up way. Balatia. Balatiad. Whatever that is. I, I see your name all the time. You continue to be uh, an active community member. But I don't know how to pronounce your username. So I'm going to just say it however I want. All right. So Balatia... And rain phase, if you guys could open up a ticket in the ticket gateway, get you $25 in stasis tokens uh, each. Other than that, uh, we will post the DeFi fund report and the playback a little later today or tomorrow uh, for everyone to uh, review if they weren't here live. Uh, But at the end of the day, the key takeaway is we generated $26,500 in yield. The DeFi fund rose in value. We brought significant value back to the market without touching the principle of the fund, which means everything grew, everything continues to grow, 
and we will continue to execute this strategy in the best way possible. So thank you guys all for the patience and trust as we continue to navigate this uh, process. Uh, and as you guys work through this with us, we will uh, do our best to deliver value back to you. So uh, with that, I say have a good day, Michael. Have a good weekend. You too, Try not man. to talk to me so much. Nah. Maybe spend a little time with your girlfriend. Nope. It's just going to be us <laughs> too, just like it always is. Markets never close, baby. Mm, we got to make sure we're on it. Crypto, baby. That's right. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Take care, everyone.